So far, you've been running Rancher in a non-HA, single node, Docker installation. And that works great for development, for testing, and even your home lab. But in a recent video, we set up a high availability K3S cluster running Kubernetes. Let's see if we can use that platform for our new Rancher installation. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about installing Rancher on an existing Kubernetes cluster. And real quick, before we get started, I stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about anything in this video, feel free to hop in and ask away. And another thing before we get started, thanks ahead of time for the likes and comments because it lets me know if I'm on track. And so let's get into it. So you might have a self-hosted Kubernetes cluster you want to manage, or you might have one in one of the cloud providers. But either way, managing those from a terminal or a cloud provider's GUI has been a challenge. And so to simplify this, we're going to install Rancher on our Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you watch my video on setting up a high availability K3S cluster, this is going to pick up right where that leaves off. But you can install Rancher on any Kubernetes cluster. So it doesn't have to be just K3S. And so just to be clear, this should work on any Kubernetes distribution. So let's hop right in. The first prerequisite is a Kubernetes cluster, obviously. You'll need to have that set up and running. The next thing you'll need is to make sure that kubectl is running on your local development machine. And you should be able to run a command like kubectl get nodes and see your nodes. And if you need help setting that up, I'll have a link in the description that points to our documentation. But you'll want to be sure that you can communicate with your Kubernetes cluster. The next thing we're going to need on our local machine is Helm. Helm is just a package manager for Kubernetes. It helps us install packages on Kubernetes using a manifest. So to install Helm, it's pretty easy. We can just copy and paste this curl command and run it on our machine. Now a quick call out really quick. I'm using WSL on Windows 10 but this should work the same in any Linux-like installation. And so let's install Helm. And so Helm's installed. Next, we'll need to add repos for Helm. This is so it can pull down our packages. And here we're gonna add the Rancher repo for Helm. Now, you can choose between latest, stable, and alpha. I'm gonna go with the stable version because this is for production environments. And so we can just copy this command and paste it in our terminal, and then we'll have the Rancher Helm repo added. And then we'll run a Helm repo update to update our packages. And you can see here, they're up to date. Next, we'll want to create a namespace specifically for Rancher. This is so all of our charts and services don't co-mingle. But before we run that, let's run a kubectl get namespace to see our existing namespaces. And you can see here, we have four namespaces. So let's create that namespace. So we're on kubectl create namespace cattle dash system. And we can see here, the namespace was created. And so let's check our work. And now you can see our new namespace. Okay, so now we have a namespace for all of our Rancher stuff to live. The next choice we have is choosing our SSL configuration. Now, this can be a large, daunting task because you have a few options. First, you can use the Rancher generated certificates. These are self-signed certificates by Rancher that work just fine. Next, you can use Let's Encrypt to generate a certificate for you. And that works fine too, but requires a little more configuration. And last, you can BYOC or bring your own certificate. And that's a certificate from a file. Now, this is the most complex one. And if you have a certificate already, you might want to use this. Otherwise, I'm just going to go with the defaults, which is the Rancher generated certificate. And because I'm going to use the Rancher generated certificate, that requires that I install Cert Manager. So Cert Manager is pretty cool. It's an add-on for Kubernetes that automatically generates certificates for you. Now Cert Manager can issue certificates from a number of issuing sources, but it can also issue them from itself and generate self-signed ones. And so that's why we need Cert Manager if we're going with a Rancher self-signed one, because it's gonna use Cert Manager to generate this. And it's really easy to install. And so these are the instructions from Cert Manager themselves. And so we'll run this first command to install custom resource definitions. And there we go, that's applied. And next we'll create a namespace specifically for Cert Manager. Again, so all of our services don't co-mingle. And I created a namespace. And if we get our namespaces, we can now see the new namespace called Cert Manager. So we're on the right track. And Cert Manager is installed via Helm. So let's install the Helm repo. And that's as simple as helm repo add jet stack and then a path to the chart. And you can see I already have it configured, but this should succeed for you. 
And after adding Helm charts, you typically update your repos. Since we added a new one, we want to run Helm repo update. And here we go, it's up to date. And the last thing we'll run to get cert manager installed is Helm install with our cert manager command. And so this command is just saying install cert manager in the namespace cert manager and use version v1.04. And that might be different depending on when you do this. But you want to be sure that you specify a version to pin it to that version. And so let's run that command. And here we go, we have cert manager installed. And so to check our work, let's run this command. Kube control get pods in the namespace of cert manager. And that's the namespace we use during our helm install to install cert manager. So we can run this and we can see here we have some pods. So this is a good sign. We're almost there. Now we can actually install Rancher. You can see here we're going to use helm to install Rancher on our Kubernetes cluster. And you can see this command is helm install Rancher and then Rancher itself to our namespace cattle system. That's the one we created earlier. And we're going to set the host name to rancher.my.org. Now you're not going to want to set it to rancher.my.org. You'll want to set it to your own DNS name internally. And so you might be thinking, what is my DNS name internally? Well, that's up to you to decide. But you'll want a DNS entry that points to, now this isn't something we haven't talked about yet, but a load balancer. Now I know that seems very complicated, but I'll show you how it works. Well, here's all it is. It's an Nginx config. So I'm using Nginx as a load balancer. And here's the Nginx config you need for Rancher. And so all this is doing is setting up some WebSockets, defining your Rancher servers for HTTP, and then defining your Rancher servers for HTTPS. And if you apply this to Nginx, you'll have a simple load balancer in front of Rancher. And then the last thing you need to do is create a local DNS entry that points to your load balancer. So in this example, I have rancher.local.yourdomain.com and that points to the IP address of the load balancer we're going to use. And so now anything that requests rancher.local.yourdomain.com on your local network will be forwarded to your load balancer. And then your load balancer will then forward that request to one of your rancher servers, which then will resolve rancher. So you'll want to take this value rancher.local.yourdomain.com or whatever you're calling your rancher server and we'll copy this command and now we'll modify it with our host name. So now our command should look like this. And so now if we run this command, this will install rancher on our cluster. And that seemed really fast, but actually it's still initializing. So if we want to check the rollout of rancher, we can do it with this command. So kube control n cattle system for our namespace rollout status and then our deployment. And we can see here zero are finished. So it's still rolling out. Here we go, one's done, there's two, and there's three. And if we just wanna check the status, we can run that command and we see deployment rancher successfully rolled out. So this is a good sign. We have rancher installed on our cluster now. And just a quick note on the command we use to install rancher, this helm command, you'll wanna save that for future use. Now it's not that complex, so just copy and paste it and tuck it away somewhere, but you'll need that when you upgrade Rancher in the future. But it's totally guessable, but I recommend copying and pasting it and putting it somewhere. And if we go out to that DNS name, we should see a self-signed certificate error, which is to be expected. That's because we told Cert Manager to generate certificates for us. But once accepting that, you can see we have Rancher installed. Now this should look exactly like the Rancher install for Docker, or Rancher, however you had it installed anywhere. So let's choose a secure password. And the next step is kind of confusing. That's choosing our view for Rancher. Now, intuitively, you would think, hey, I'm only going to use Rancher on the cluster it was installed on. And that works fine, and you could use it. But then you'll see the new UI that is less familiar. And don't get me wrong, this is a great UI, but it's not what we're used to seeing when we manage multiple clusters. And this is a source of confusion for people who use the Docker install is that intuitively you think, well, yeah, I only have one cluster, let's manage one cluster. And then you get thrown into a UI that you've never seen before. But we'll poke through it really quick. If we go into namespaces, we can see all of our namespaces. We go into nodes, we can see our nodes. And you can see a lot of different things within here. But what I typically do, even if I'm managing only one cluster, is go into cluster manager. Once you go into there, it'll ask you for your rancher server URL. Now this is the same URL that you're on right now, and you'll want to save that. And once you save the URL, you'll be greeted with a welcome screen, and you'll be blasted with light mode. So let's change that really quick. This is burning my eyeballs. 
So if we go into preferences, change the dark mode. There we go. We're a lot better now. And let's go back to global. So now this looks very familiar. This is what we've seen in Rancher for a long time. And so we have a local cluster here. And if we go into default, we don't see any resources. We don't see any workloads. We don't see anything because this is our new cluster that we just set up. Now we don't see anything here because our Kubernetes cluster that this is running on isn't running any pods. Now, if you had pods and Kubernetes running ahead of time and you had pods running there, you'll see them there. But if you just set up Kubernetes and you just installed Rancher, we're not gonna see anything here. And so you might think, well, okay, I wanna create a new cluster. And so you might think, well, I'm gonna add a cluster. But if you're only running one cluster and Rancher is running on that cluster, this is the local cluster. If you wanna add another cluster that Rancher is not managing, that's when you would add a cluster. And so you would go into here if you wanted to add an existing cluster. If you had something in GCP or Google Cloud, Azure or AWS, or another bare metal install somewhere else, off-site, or a self-hosted one within your own infrastructure, here's where you'd add it. But again, since Rancher's already managing this cluster, we don't need to do anything here. And so on this cluster, we can take a look around. We can add apps to this cluster if we want. We can see our namespaces. And if you're wondering why we don't see our previous namespaces that we set up, that's because they're in the system project, which would be here, system, namespaces. And so now we can see all the namespaces we set up earlier, but we don't want to do anything in system. We want to stay in default. Unless it specifically tells you to do something in system, you never do anything in system. So anyways, it has all of the things we already know about Rancher. And we can see all of our nodes here too. So these are the nodes from our K3S cluster or your existing Kubernetes cluster. You can see here, Hele01, Hele02, O3, O4 are all of my agents and they're available to take on any workloads. But you can see here, Hoku01 and Hoku02, these have a taint that we set up that say only critical add-ons. And so they aren't gonna take any of our normal workloads. And they're really just our Kubernetes API servers. And you can see here, it has a role of control plane where our agents have a role of worker. And so let's add some workloads. So if we go back into our local cluster in default, we'll wanna click deploy. And let's call this Nginx. And let's add the Nginx image. And then we'll add the Nginx image and we'll keep it simple and just run Nginx and we'll make sure our agents will pick up this workload. So let's launch. So if we click launch, we can see Kubernetes is saying, hey, it didn't have the minimum workload and it's spun up now and now it does. So it meets the requirement. And what's the requirement? We have a config scale of one. So we've scaled to one and Kubernetes sees that everything's okay. And if we look, this is running on Hele01, but it doesn't have to run on Hele01. That's the cool thing about Kubernetes. So if we scale this down and let it remove the workload, then we add it again. Well, it's running on Hele01. But that's totally fine because Hele01 is available to take on pods. So let's add another one, see where it ends up. And here we go, it's getting scheduled on Hele04. It's creating the container. And now we have two workloads running. That one workload is now running on two different nodes. And so let's go a little bit crazy. Let's scale this up to 20. And if we scale it up to 20, we can see this pod getting scheduled on many nodes. And we can see it's unavailable, but it's creating a container on some. And shortly, it should be available. And here we go. Now we just scaled to 20 on Nginx. And this could be really any workload, but you'll have to make sure it supports concurrency. But we can see here it's scheduled on many different nodes. And we can go really crazy and double that and scale up to 40. Now we should have 20 more pods getting created and they're already running. And that's the cool thing about Kubernetes too. That's because the Docker image is now cached on that machine. So the first time you deploy it, it needs to cache the Docker image when it pulls it. But after that, it's super fast. And so if we go into one of those nodes, we can see this node here, Hele01, has nine of 110 pods used. And this pods used is based on the resources that it has. But you can see disk space fine, disk pressure fine, memory pressure fine, and kubelet is fine. And then if we go to our cluster view, we can see 41 of 666 pods are used. And that's really cool. And if we go back into workloads and expand this, we can see all of our pods are running and they're all in good shape. But what happens if one of the agents goes away, if one of the workers can't take on pods anymore? Say for instance, Hele01, what happens if that goes down? Well, let's figure it out. But first, we'll have to set up a health check. So if we go into our workload and we go to edit, 
we should expand health checks. Now, typically you would have a health check based on some logic and you would check to see if it's ready, if it's alive, and then execute some logic to make sure your service is doing what it's supposed to be doing. But for this really quick, I'm just gonna create a health check that opens a TCP connection to port 80. And so Nginx listens on port 80 and it responds with the hello world page in the default image. And so we'll just use that as a quick and dirty check to make sure it's alive. So let's save that. And so after applying that change, it should roll out that health check to all of these pods and then they should be in a good status. And if we check, these are scheduled once again on all different nodes. And so now let's shut down Haleo 1 and see what happens. Okay, so we just shut down Haleo 1, which is one of my workers. And you can see that that workload's scheduled on some of these nodes. And now you can see that their status is unknown. And if you wait long enough, you can see that none of these nodes are now scheduled on the down system, which was Haleo 1. And if we look, we can see it's not scheduled there. And I learned that this timeout is configurable, but you'll want to tune it to your needs. And so to clean up, we can scale down to zero and see them all get removed, or we can just delete this workload. And that's how simple it is to get Rancher installed on any existing Kubernetes cluster. We took our existing high availability K3S cluster and installed Rancher on it. And you can do the same thing to any Kubernetes cluster now. And so are you running Kubernetes at home? Have you installed Rancher on your Kubernetes cluster to help manage it? Have you installed Rancher on your Kubernetes cluster to manage another Kubernetes cluster? If so, let me know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my videos, hop in my stream and let's figure it out. So, thanks so much for watching, and till next time, stream on, my friends. This one comes up a lot, and I think, you know, it, it, no one explained it better than Kubernetes themselves. And so, you know, I, I, you know, I've seen it in the headlines on social media and other places. And at the end of the day, it's almost, it's, it, it's almost no change unless you're a Kubernetes operator or unless you installed Kubernetes yourself and compiled it yourself and, and installed it on individual machines yourself. And so for the large majority of people, it's almost zero change because, because the people who run Kubernetes for you or the services that spin up Kubernetes for you, or the Kubernetes hosting systems, uh, will will bear the brunt of that load.